Welcome to The Real Deal, where we get real about what it takes to succeed. Whether it's wealth, health, relationships, or finding your purpose, we talk to the masters to uncover the secrets to defying the odds and creating your own rock star legacy. I'm Doug, and after working on multiple Grammy-winning records as an author, transformational speaker, and your personal translightenment coach, I'm committed to your growth and success. And now, here's the real deal. Today's episode is brought to you by GuidedHypnotic.com. Perhaps you're feeling stressed out, full of anxiety, or maybe just dealing with challenges in life, go ahead and download your free guided hypnotic meditation at guidedhypnotic.com. All right. Just have to add that in there too. Sorry. Absolutely. Brought to you by, right? <laughs> All right. It. My dear friend whom I've known for longer than either of us would like to admit, Mark Wood and Laura Kay. Recording artist, performer, producer, inventor, Emmy Award-winning composer, and music education advocate Mark Wood has spent the past four decades electrifying the orchestra industry, literally. Dubbed the Les Paul and Jimi Hendrix of the violin world by PBS, Wood is the premier electric violinist of his generation who pioneered the entire genre. Wood rose to fame as a string master and original member of the internationally acclaimed Trans-Siberian Orchestra, selling over 10 million albums. A successful solo artist in his own right, Wood writes and records original music from film and television, has released seven albums and tours with his band, The Mark Wood Experience. He has also featured his own TV, TED Talk excuse me, and his YouTube channel, Mark Wood TV, has over four million views. Laura Kay has a lyricism and musicality all her own and is a rock and roll chanteuse who works take no prisoner, whose take no prisoner's voice invokes the likes of Steven Tyler and Aretha Franklin. As a singer, songwriter, performer, and vocal coach, Laura has spent the last 20 years empowering young singers as part of Electrify Your Symphony, EYS, a groundbreaking music education program she co-founded with Mark Wood. Laura has worked with legendary musicians such as James Brown, Aretha Franklin, Lenny Kravitz, and Sean Lennon, and her voice has been featured on countless television shows and advertisements. In addition to her solo work, Laura is a feature, the featured vocalist on many of Mark's recordings. The true passion of this power couple is music education. Their groundbreaking music education program, Electrify Your Symphony, is celebrating its 20th anniversary in 2020. EYS is an immersive rock and roll workshop and concert series for school music departments that boosts student self-esteem and helps raise much-needed funds. Mark, Laura, and their team of artist mentors visit upwards of 75 schools per year. EYS has been featured on NBC TV's The Today Show, CBS Evening News, CBS Morning News, and regional media outlets. In addition to EYS, Mark and Laura run the annual Markwood Rock Orchestra Camp and Festival, now in its 11th year, as well as the Markwood Music Foundation, a 501c3 charitable organization dedicated to supporting musicians and the arts in America's underserved communities. While schools closed during COVID-19, Mark and Laura were quickly tasked with finding ways to continue their mission by reinventing every aspect of their shared businesses as creative people must do these days. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, no, that thank you wonderful. for giving me such amazing content to share. <laughs> so, holy crap, guys. Yeah. You have been reinventing, repositioning, pivoting, and making a huge difference in musicians and, nay, the world. Um, how are you doing it? What's going on? Get us up to speed for those we of us who no have life. Been. We have no life. We have no fr I have no friends. Uh, we work 24-7. Oh, well, uh, we get no we sleep. Have no, it's actually a labor of love. Anything that's driven by love and passion, that's a piece of cake. But we have to, you know, it's every single day. We have employees and yep. we have people who work with us. So every day we have to focus our employees with not only building my instruments, but also focusing our office with our outreach. And Doug, as you know, over two months ago, the entire world flips upside down. Yeah. And we had to once again assess and, and evaluate what was working, what was not working, and realize and this is actually an opportunity more than a, dis a distraction. 
Well, I mean, right there, yeah. first off, mic drop bomb is that that mindset of looking at this as an opportunity as opposed to the end of the world, a distraction, whatever it is, that is so tantamount to the ability to do what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, you yeah. know, the truth is we're creative people, right? So COVID-19 hit in the middle of probably one of our busiest electrifier symphony seasons that we've had on record, mm -hmm. shutting everything down for months. And you basically have two choices. So choice one is curl up in a ball in the corner. We did that for about a minute. Um, and then choice two is, well, we're creative people. This is how we've lived our lives for as long as we've been on the planet. This is going to test every ounce of our abilities. We have to reinvent ourselves. It's essentially like on March 13th or whatever the day was that everything closed, the vehicle that we've been driving just completely got totaled, like exploded in the seams. Yep. And right that day, we had to start rebuilding a new one. And that's what we've been doing nonstop 24 seven. Uh, amazing. And what, how did you deal with sometimes when you got that resistance? Was there external resistance or internal resistance as you had these yeah. challenges, as you were building your, your new vehicle? Or rebuilding. Or rebuilding, yeah. yeah. I think, Doug, what is, um, when you're an entrepreneur, remember the 21st century musician is musician artist slash entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, management, uh, record companies, they are not there to protect us never have actually and you're you pray that you get a royalty check when you're even signed to sony um and we discovered many many years ago that we have to take the the reins by ourselves and control our vehicle the way we want to because every day especially now there's something new that's happening that we have to adapt to 20 years ago when uh, actually 25 years ago doug when we last bumped into you um, oh the industry, I mean, we would, yeah. you could spend a couple of months doing one thing. Yeah. Now we do barely 10 things a day. We do a, a maximum of 10 things every single day of uh, projects, overseeing certain things, because we really believe that the s secret is being 10 feet in front of us. Um, mm -hmm. We cannot afford, you can, and nobody else who has a creative sensibility cannot afford to be behind in thinking because somebody else is going to come in there and possibly do it better. I mean, we've really reinvented a lot of the way that musicians think. And, and Doug, thank you again for uh, allowing us to hang with yeah. you. Uh, oh, we really That's actually right. enjoy sharing a little bit. We're not private about our successes, about sharing it. We work with a lot of young musicians mm -hmm. and a lot of young students in schools where it's important that, you know, probably 99% of them will never become professional musicians. But the point is how to survive on your feet eyes wide open where you're trained to do something you're graduating college harvard university at 24 now what you're you know you're working at walmart you're working at you know you're lost you don't know how to interact with the world and i think being musicians you have to be able to interact with everybody professionally well, right oh my goodness i mean that well and that's what the artistry is is creating that connection in as many formats as possible. Um, and you guys have been able to, you know, not only do it, but teach it, which is also a, a huge, huge accomplishment because most people, I mean, I, I dare I say, I was kind of one of them at the peak of my career is when Napster came out. And, you know, I was like, well, all right, you know, like I, I tapped out, you know, I was like, I'm, I, I'm going to go now and, and I, I'm grateful for my choice. Now I help people create music of their lives, but y you were able to figure it out in, and that is amazing. Like walk us through, like, cause you've been through, you've, you've been there. Like when you, like you, digital technology was the COVID of, uh, right. Right. <laughs> of the music <laughs> industry, right. You had to, all of a sudden everything changed. Yes, and Doug, thank you, and, and Laura, if you don't mind, uh, you're going to add your two cents. But I always, and I, of course, reflection and being grateful for what we've achieved is critical. Every day I meditate and think of how grateful and, and incredibly lucky we are. But if you fe uh, rewind when I was in my 20s, living in an abandoned building 
with nothing but building my electric violins, which are on my wall here when I was in high school in the 70s, going to Juilliard, no money, nothing, no career. I wanted to be a rock violin player. That was unheard of. Every guitar player laughed at me, right? And 25, 26 bands uh, auditioning and, and, and showcasing. And then I met Laura. And then we focused a little bit. We got married and we had a kid. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, my career, I had my record deal out and I was hanging with Dimebag Daryl, hanging with Eddie Van Halen, hanging with uh, Randy Rhodes, that whole virtuoso wow. rock thing. You remember that? Yeah. And I loved it. I contributed to it. But the second Nirvana happened, guess what happened to all of us? Mm -hmm. We had to scatter like cockroaches. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we were having a kid. It was like, oh, no, I have no skills. I have no ability to do anything but play the squeaky violin. So at that time, I was also doing film scoring. And within about two months, we were able to reassess our industry and create a production company. And we actually did a lot uh, at Cove at that time yep. with our, uh, yeah. and we did film scores, uh, you know, all this great stuff. We were able to buy a house. And then we formed the Trans Siberian Orchestra 25 years ago. And then it continually snowballed. So we were constantly re. Uh, imagining what we are capable of doing uh, and I think back to what your thought was uh, Doug the way we treat each other the way we professionally treat other musicians and business people by the way mm -hmm. like I need you to like me and if I say something that's stupid you are not going to want to work with me so we have to play really understand the dynamics of social interaction 100%. Um, yeah. Laura, would you like to share? I mean, I, yes. I'm sure that was a, a disruptor as well, having a child. It, uh, this kind of changes things. Oh, yeah. Pretty really much fast. everything. Pretty much everything. Like, you're sort of going along, and, you know, it's like, while the kid is still not out on the planet yet, it's still just the two of us. Mm -hmm. It's still just my body, and it's just me. And then all of a sudden, ba-bam! This child comes, and now it's your heart walking around outside your body. Mm -hmm. I've written songs about that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like this, the focus shifted. But again, we're a creative family. We're creative thinkers. I mean, our house, when Elijah, our, our child is named Elijah. Elijah is the drummer for Shania Twain. Elijah has played with Gwen Stefani. Elijah has been on America's Got Talent as a house drummer. He's done all sorts of really incredible things on their own. But when Elijah was little, the house from one end to the other was an art project or a science experiment mm -hmm. or, um, or, or music. whatever, or music, always mm -hmm. music. Um, uh, Mark tried unsuccessfully to get Elijah to play the violin. That didn't work. So Elijah took to drums, which is good because we needed a drummer. Um, but well, I will say one of the, the coolest yeah. Christmas videos you guys so, did was where you guys were all playing. You, you did the, the uh, I forget the song. I just remember the three of you. And I was like, oh, this is so cool and so Yellow you. Like, it was probably. No, remember that little fake drum set that yeah. somebody had given us? And we, we set it up. It's like, let's do a little Christmas video. And Elijah played it and the thing fell completely yep. apart. Oh, and I right. sang fake opera. And it was right. like, I wish we had oh, that so video. Cute. I could share it right now. It is, it is floating around. It's really yeah, cute. Yeah. And I just, I just, yeah, just warmed our heart. Like, oh my gosh, look at this. It's just fucking rock and roll family. It is, it's, it's in the genes. You can tell. Oh, it is. It, we well, so you know, lucky. it's about, you know, as a parent, at least a lot of people have always have asked us about our parenting style, which was basically, again, we're creative people. We make the rules up as yeah. we go along. And we have a and state so, of mind of 11 year old. <laughs> and we have a state of mind of a perpetual, regardless of what's happening to the skin. In my heart, I'm eight years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, cause you have to be a child and have to relate, but we never put any creative boundaries on Elijah. Mm -hmm. It was always whatever, wherever the wind blew, their focus is where we followed, mm -hmm. and um, and always, you know, it was it was definitely fun. I do miss those days. But to, to what Mark was saying before, I tell the choirs that I work with all the time because uh, part of what we do is also motivational speaking and getting them to understand how to be leaders in the world, mm -hmm. um, whether you're on stage, off stage, in a classroom, on a job interview, anything. But you should constantly be reevaluating your definition of success. Beautiful. So, 
And that's something that will take you like if I, you know, when I was 16, I thought my definition of success at 16 was I'm going to sell a million records and be a superstar by the time I'm 30. And that's all I'm focusing on. And that's that's it. Well, 30 came and went. I didn't have that pie in the sky record deal. I wasn't playing in front of millions of people. I had a career, but it wasn't going quite the way I wanted. So again, it's down to choices. It's always down to choices. I really believe that. Do I give up or do I find, do I check out what's happening on my peripheral vision? And you have to always keep your eyes open because opportunities are everywhere. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to create them yourself. Um, Mark can tell you exactly how EYS even started. It wasn't that we actually were like, hey, let's do a music education program. It's sort of somebody approached us mark you want to tell the story of how how eys even began yeah i mean as Which doug so knows cool. we uh, do a educational outreach and of course after juilliard and never graduating high school i had no interest in the four walls of school never it wasn't creative it, i had it couldn't wait to get out of high school and go to juilliard at 15 and um it was a constant feeling that our school music programs were not efficient in being in a contemporary um, uh, invigorating experience for students, especially for orchestra musicians. Sometimes it can be dreadful and you're just sawing and you can't wait to get out of that room. Um, we really try to look at that, but when we are, I was touring with the trans Siberian Orchestra and we performed at the Rock World Hall of Fame and we did an afternoon matinee. So we're in front of like kids and teachers, and I'm not even oh, thinking wow. to myself. And Chris Caffrey, the guitar player, who's one of my dear friends, you know, we're all tired and we're rambling incoherently and the audiences, and I said, give me that microphone. And I said, okay, everybody listen up. We're the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Check out what we can do. This is a keyboard player. Hey, Bob, play something for you. He would play some of the kids would go nuts. Hey, uh, Jeff, play some drums. And then the teacher afterwards came up to me and said, can you put together a trans Siberian orchestra at my school? I was like, sure. I'm up for anything that's different. And I walked in, and that first day, within five minutes, these kids were all over creativity, all over the invention of my instruments. They were all over improvising and playing rock and roll on stringed instruments. That was about 22 years ago. And that I was like, wow, I finally have met. Because, Doug, remember... I play electric violin. I don't play electric guitar. Mm -hmm. When you go see Joe Satriani or Steve Vai, pretty much 80% of the, of the audience are guitar players, right? Right, yeah. Copying their licks and, mm -hmm. you know, instrumentals. But the string world, they couldn't understand what I was doing. So I removed them. I had guitar players in my audience as my fan base, but no string players. It's like, where, where are you guys? Come on, man. I need my string players. So I went into that classroom that one time. And I saw my fan base. I was like, wow, you're going to come to see me play. And I'm also going to help you find out who you are through your instrument, through innovation, technology, and a new way of thinking about music with improvising and rock styles, jazz, hip hop, and not just classical. And then boom, it's been incredible ever since wow. by developing that fan base. That is amazing. And are you taking them to schools around the country? Is it like, how are you? Worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. We've done Amazing. it in Australia. We've done it in Poland. We've done it in Europe. We've done it. We're, you know, we're playing, we're planning all this stuff. We're on pause temporarily right. because of travel restrictions. But within the next couple of years, this is going to be an international, um, international um, viewpoint that is encompassing diversity. Mm. in music as you know in classical music forgive me dead white guys whatever i don't care it's beethoven we bow down and we bow down to mozart but it's a european tradition and mm -hmm. it's wonderful and i play classical music every day but music should reflect life music should reflect people and uh well mark you play violin you should only do you're uh, only allowed in that corner you should not you're not allowed to get out of that box over there i was like no way man I nobody puts Jimmy mark hendrix. in the corner no. yeah i mean <laughs> when we see Jimi hendrix and we see frank zappa and we see led zeppelin and the beatles and miles davis you're seeing innovation on every note yep. every note and then you know where i wasn't trained that way so i really bring that value to the schools that each person is valuable in their artistry and their 
um, expression, their personal expression. So we really put a lot of effort on these kids to find themselves. Well, what I can say is I, I've seen some of the videos when you guys share them and the fulfillment on your guys' faces and the right. band's faces <laughs> and the kids' faces is just off the hook. It, like you could just see the love, the, the walls breaking down and it's just presence right there, which is, it, it is beautiful to see. And, and, yeah. and remember, I mean, the demographic, Doug, this is what every artist works 24 seven is to get someone to like your artistry, your music, yep. your CDs, your merch, your t-shirts. You know, that's the industry. That's your mm-hmm. artist. And we would go into a school where we've got, I've got 200 string players. Uh, uh, actually, in Sioux Falls, Doug, we had a thousand kid choir, a thousand piece orchestra, and a thousand piece band performing w- oh, with us in an arena. That's gonna be a world with- record. Yeah, it's our um, our PBS special, which you've got to check out. And uh, that moment in time was I knew that we could bring everybody together and celebrate with artist mentors, high level artists, not amateur musicians were on the stage as the mentors, but these are the highest level possible singers, brass players, guitar players, string players. And the kids, you know, here's, here's something for you, Doug, that was the absolute validation. After the concert, the music store, who or is our dealer of our instruments, right? They're, they have music stores all over the country. And he said to me, every year at the end of the year, December, kids return their instruments. They're just sick of playing music, right? I've had it with playing the viola and the clarinet, you know. 50%. This time, for the first time in history, not one kid returned their instrument. Think about that, that we inspired them to say, you know what? This isn't too bad. I can find myself, right, Laura? Absolutely. Yeah, it's the impact on the kids. I mean, the reason that you can see the joy on our faces when we're doing it, it's, it's, such a responsibility to be around young people because we all know one wrong word can send somebody on a path that is not good but a right word and the right amount of encouragement can open someone up and get them to take that step outside of their comfort zone and for us to actually watch it as it's happening right with with a young person is like is mind-blowing that we have kids what's so cool right now is that we're getting approached by kids who may have worked with us when they were in middle school and they were so inspired by working with us they changed the focus of their whole career trajectory became music teachers and now they're hiring us to come in and work with their kids oh my god and that's insane to me it's very very humbling um and and um just really underscores how freaking awesome and Doug, it is Doug, Doug, that we're able thing, to do what we do. The yeah. other thing that's really special is that we're not teachers. The right. teacher world is so complicated and difficult. Oh my God, I could never be a teacher. Being an artist mentor is so valuable because it creates that moment. If I was 15 years old and I bumped into, let's say, Jimmy Page, that would be life-changing, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm on the level of Jimmy Page, but that that still exists when we walk. Well, he's still okay. <laughs> he's, he's still okay. <laughs> but there's, I think what Mark, Mark, Mark is saying is there is a rock star vibe. We don't walk in as teachers. Mm-hmm. What the teachers do is ridiculously important. We can't do our job unless the teacher is doing what they're supposed to do mm-hmm. from a curriculum level and from what they're being taught to do but we come in and partner with the teachers and give the kids and them an alternative way of looking at how to create music and how to put yourself into your music as opposed to mark likes to say taking yourself away from the dots on the page right um because music is not about dots on the page music is here music is here it's visceral it's you know it's and and to get these kids to take that chance and, and go with you and it's more than just like getting the meat. Like it's one thing to meet some, you know, person you admire. It's a whole other ball game to play with them, to connect oh, yeah. on that level. Oh, and oh. that gift, you know, and I know it's reciprocal. It's just for you, you guys are just, you're, you're vibrating on a different frequency to give them that gift of participating and feeling and connecting 
you know, both, you know, like with you and then obviously to the, you know, otherness is, I mean, that's a game changer. And that's why I think you have such transformational work because it's immersive. It's not a, like, uh, an epiphany of like, oh, I intellectually had this idea. It's an experience, which is, you know, so powerful. And Doug, what's also, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when we go back to the hotel room after the concert, we five hour rehearsals, by the way, during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've never met these kids. We have 24 hours. It's like these kids, it's like a hurricane hitting them when we walk in. And they have to be ready for us. And we demand in a loving way to strive to their best. There's mm-hmm. no slackers. And, you know, you know, there's a kid way in the back behind the music stand who's like playing like this and he's, you know, like not impressed at all. Within 10 minutes, that kid is standing up and feeling mm-hmm. and moving and he runs home to his parents and said, oh, my goodness, I, my life has changed. I have more confidence. Or, Doug, the kid that Laura and I were sort of, less me, more Laura, <laughs> was the kid who is in the corner, who really is not communicating to a lot of people, not that social and struggling with uh, identity. Mm -hmm. That's the kid that Laura and I really love to showcase because the alphas in the classroom are not letting that happen the whole year. They're right. just, you know, pushing everybody aside. We come in and say, wait a second, who are you over there? And they're all looking at us going, oh, don't call on that kid. <laughs> and I've had several teachers say, Mark, don't call on that kid. He's a disruptor. I said, I like him. Yeah. I mean, so I bring this kid up. I, I introduce myself. He's shaking, right? And within 10 minutes, I said, why don't you try this? And you're going to stand next to me, and you're going to handshake with me, and we're going to do this together, and I'm not going to let you fail. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm telling you, within 10 minutes, that kid's life changes like that. That is a big power, Doug. Yeah. Where can we get that You know, on a stage? I mean, I played Madison Square Garden five times with the TSO, right? I performed with Roger Daltrey there. I've, I mean, I have the most charmed career. But when a kid is um, woken like that, it is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's it, hard yeah. to describe. Yeah. It, it is. It's, you know, you, we kind of, as artists, we're trained uh, or we train ourselves. Right, to keep a distance. To, well, yeah, no, but also I was going to say to read an audience. Mm -hmm. So we can always, you know this, you Mm -hmm. you go on stage and you can read the room and your instincts kind of kick in. Well, it's the same thing when you go into work with these kids. So we walk in and we read the room. I always look for the choir kids in the back row and the ones who are hiding in the corner and don't want me to see them because those are the ones that need this the most. Mm -hmm. And Mark, like you said, does exactly the same thing. And if you could reach even one of those kids, it's a win on every level. And it creates a domino effect because yes. by touching the one, they go. It, it gives permission to the other kids to let loose and and all of that. Yep. And yeah, it's do. I mean, we do such similar work. I, I you know, we'll talk offline in the future to do events together. Because imagine throwing in a firewalk into what you guys are doing, or <laughs> you know, like yeah, make it, like full on experience, <laughs> like breakthrough, but like you know, one, two, three, four punches that you know sets a new <laughs> level of paradigm shift thinking but as you're doing this how do you like deal with now as we're put on pause another reinvention it is more insane (laughs) than we have ever experienced not only we having to redefine it but more importantly as fall comes into play the concept of school is changing and mm-hmm. innovating. Good news, great news, right? Mm. The arts, music programs are all being pushed aside because the academic work, blah, 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 blah. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. And we are trying our best every moment of the day to get the message out that if you remove the arts and creativity from learning, we are in terrible shape. We are going to be put back to the Middle Ages as far as the way we communicate to each other. Yeah. Doug, what is so great is that music is not verbal, uh, singing is, but we have lyrics, singing Mm -hmm. is poetry. So when we talk as human to human, we have a limited vocabulary to describe the color purple. Mm -hmm. We have a limited vocabulary to describe the melody of Eleanor Rigby. 
We have limited vocabulary. So when we play the part without talking, it transcends everything emotionally for a child, a parent, an audience member, you and me. Like what, uh, let me ask you this. What was your goosebump moment as a teenager when you heard a piece of music that you fell to your knees and said, oh my God, this is unique special. Uh, Come on. The Rain Song. Oh, good. Um, Oh, that's my favorite Zeppelin song. Yeah, I, I just I'm getting goosebumps now, remembering I, like you know driving in the car and and hearing and then the whole like the progression of it and the the, oh, the dynamism. One of the best songs ever written, I believe. Still to this day, but yep. if you listen to the song right now, I bet you would visually transform. You would physically, emotionally, psychically, every yeah. part of your being. Mm-hmm would be pulled back to that moment. And that's why music is so critical to the way we relate to people, the way we explain things. Uh, Leonard Bernstein said this, I, I was mentored by Leonard Bernstein, who with our great conductor and uh, uh, educationals. He said, talking about music is like dancing about architecture. <laughs> Right? It's like, yep. there's no way. Describe the rain song in one sentence. Oh, it can't be done. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, what does that mean? Awesome. What does that awesome sound like? <laughs> yeah, if I if if I were more musically uh, trained, because I, I I'm all everything I learned was you know like I just figured it out. I might be able to explain some of the devices that are in there, but even yeah, that but I know would do it no injustice. Yeah. Yeah, it's all emotional. It's yeah. all music is on an emotional level. I mean. And the thing that we, we're all noticing now during this pandemic, and I want to get back to answering your question about what action we actually have been taking during the last three months, um, is how everybody is flocking to the music and the arts to entertain themselves. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to tell us that it's not relevant and cut budgets in schools? Hmm, what's wrong with that picture? Um, so we have to we have to really ramp up our fight where that's concerned. But the first thing that we did, I will say within 24 hours of the announcement that everything was shut and that all our programs in the spring were canceled and everything's canceled, we're reaching out to uh, other clients and and pursuing projects that had been on hold. Mark is working with, um, and you'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to get to to the meat of what what I want to get to. Mark is working with Smart Music right now and putting out all these tutorial videos Mm -hmm. and stuff that they had been talking about for a while, but there was no time. Now there's time. We make time for it because we're visually online learning is is what's happening now and is probably, like Mark said, going to go into the fall. So we have a uh, a rock orchestra camp that we do every summer. This is our 11th year. It's usually done in Kansas, just outside of Kansas City at this really gorgeous university. Last year was our 10th anniversary. We had like 200 people. It was huge, guest artists and everything. And we were planning this big thing. And I start getting bombarded with emails from parents. It's like, you know, even if it's going to be open, I don't want to put my kid on a plane. Hmm. And so we had to immediately shift. Well, we have to, again, it's down to choices. It's always about choices. In my world, it always feels like a choice. We cancel and walk away and we have no money, we have no income, we have no, you know, everything's shut down. Or, hmm, how can we make the MW Rock experience, Mark Wood Rock Orchestra Camp experience, valuable on a virtual level? But not just like everybody else is doing it. We have to do it the way that we do things, with the, which is always sort of over, above, and beyond mm-hmm. and everything. So we devoted all of our energy into planning virtual MW Rock, which is happening July 13th through the 24th online at MWROC.com. Um, and everything that we're planning towards this two week intensive thing, it's all collaborative. It's all, it's not just going to be a bunch of talking heads and the kids listen or don't listen or pretend to listen. We, they have collaborative things that they can work on us with in real time and then also submit things. And we're going to do a big virtual concert with videos, of course, at the end of it mm-hmm. um, and then do a world premiere at some point. But the reason that we're putting so much energy into camp 
is because, and we even have a huge teacher training element in it because these teachers are desperate right now. In fact, this week is a week that a lot of teachers have to submit their plans mm. for the fall and how to incorporate online learning if their district is still not a large and large, uh, allowing large ensembles. So online learning is going to be around for a very long time. And again, we have to adapt and we have to be ahead of the curve. So by planning camp to such an, an insane level, now we can come with a scalable version that we can do for like a one or a two day Electrify Your Symphony online event. Um, and it's Which could also really help a lot of schools who don't have the budget to bring you all in, right. so it gives you a broader impact. Right. Huge. Absolutely. Right. And I think that the business model is uh, an interesting one and something that we are constantly readapting. But we're also, because of the virtual thing, we're able to bring in the master violin player from India instead of fly. Tr uh, we've been trying to fly this guy in for years uh, with visas. It's like, well, now you can experience from the comfort of your home the master Indian violinist Manjunath. And then there are the European and other people who could never physically come to our camp now can participate and teach. So obviously technology opens up tremendous opportunities that a, a, a real live camp does not, but of course being live yeah. face to face Very different, is, the, is the only way. This is not to replace it, it's to augment it. And, and that's such a, a beautiful thing and hopefully technology will continue to grow in a way that can create more collaboration and feel that connection because I'm not sure the tech is quite there yet where the mm. you can still like hear and feel what's going on. Right. Um, but the tech, it's coming. Um, but it's, it's so great that you're looking at the hybrid. Right, the visceral feeling that yeah. humans have. And again, that's been an interesting topic the last couple of weeks is what we're missing out by not having social contact. Uh, and having a mask, by the way, as you know, going out, which we have to, and we're going to be doing that. Really, I never really thought about how our mouths are, sm a smile is so critical to a stranger. Now I can't, uh, who knows what this person well, is the, looking Actually, at. yeah, I, it was so funny you say that. The first time I was out uh, with masks and, and the, the person at the checkout counter had a mask, I was like, oh, we're doing eye smiles. Like you've got to see <laughs> like a little bit of a yeah. change. And oh you can, my God, right. But it, it's a new level of sensory acuity where you can kind of see that there, there is that, oh which, is, which is nice. You know, here we don't have it as bad as up north. You know, it's considerably more relaxed down here. So the right. masks are optional and for most of the things. So fortunately, we don't have the that all the time. But yes, that was the first thing I felt. It was like, man, how are we going to, that? other than conscious communication, you know, you can't see the smile as well. You can't see a smirk or a, the right. subtlety is gone. Very subtle things that humans pick up. And, and I'm it's trying like to playing a violin with gloves. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which he has. Done. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> I figured wiggling my eyebrows like Groucho Marx will be the sign I'm smiling. You know, I, you know, you, you don't know. I, and we do not want to build a new culture on covering our, our mouths. No, definitely it's not. A temporary thing that you and I know. Um, we're just not quite sure the exact date of this living hell will end, but... Uh, <laughs> well, again, I think it's going to be just like music, diversity. Yeah. Some people are going to want to wear them longer. Some people are going to wear them shorter. And I think just like with music is the, the suspension of judgment, the assumption of um, appreciation and best intent, Right, like I like that because yeah. I remember growing up, like I I was a metalhead, like that was what I was into at first. Right, right? I the disco sucked, and but now like and, and I got into as I started getting to more progressive music and you know some like um, uh, what's the band I'm thinking of, uh, Court of the Crimson King, um, oh, Crimson Crim King, King oh. Crimson. Oh, I just like I would start yeah, listening yeah, to stuff yeah. like that, and then I was like, okay, cool, I, I can lower that, and then. When I got into music, I, I mean, I recorded everything and produced a Irish polka band to, you know, a harp player to symphonies, and I really appreciated all music, um, and never, you know, assumed the worst about anything. When we were working with Rick, we did all the hip hop stuff, so I was working yeah. with Mike Bivens to, you know, D, right, and right. yeah, and the, 
I think that that's one of the great things, the unifiers of music is that it, it breaks down those walls of, it suspends judgment. Um, if you can allow yourself to appreciate a new form of music, if you don't get locked into like, oh, well, it's got to be a certain, that's a maturity thing, I think. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because music should reflect culture, should reflect right. humanity. And, you know, certain types of music that doesn't um, float my boat, but working with the, like I worked with Kanye West about 10 years ago on this Pepsi commercial. And he, I mean, he did not go to Juilliard. He did not go mm -hmm. to Harvard in music composition. He had a little keyboard <laughs> with a, an octave keyboard that he <laughs> would <octave>. trigger samples. <laughs> And a man, I, my, my five-year-old kid could do that. And then I would watch him do and make the choices and selection. I was like, wait a second. The artistry is not the pressing of a button. The artistry is why are you pressing that one instead of the one next to it? Mm -hmm. And why are you choosing that? And he could not explain to me. I said, why did you choose that loop over the one right next to it? He said, I have no idea. It spoke to me. And I was like, okay, we're operating on a different level here yeah. Yeah. with pushing buttons. So that, you know, and I would never have that experience at Juilliard. Never in a million years. I'm with highly trained, very stuffy, uptight, snobbish musicians. You know, we're listening to King Crimson and Brahms and Beethoven. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm hanging with Kanye West. And I really recognized the power of choice and ideas. No matter how fast I'm playing, I'm I'm blazing, and I'm and you're going, man, Mark, you play really fast. That does <laughs> nothing, absolutely right. nothing, to further the story of my life and my playing. So it really was an interesting moment for me to wake up, Mark. This well, guy is truly on your level. I, and I want to honor you guys both because you are both, you know, virtuosos in your craft. You have incredible talent, and you've done the work. Yet you're still appreciating that moment where it's not about the fact that, you know, I can I just, yeah, big deal. I can hit those notes and I can change my intonation the way I, you know, all that like whoop to do. Right. Cause if you take the passion out of it and you take the, the divinity yeah. out of it and the reason take and the, the reason, reason. Yeah. The right. Why, then, the why. Yeah. Then you're just stuck with a stale, stale scale that went really fast. It worse, um, you do a disservice to the artistry of why. Why are you, t why are you t taking up the time, my valuable time right now, why are you bothering me <laughs> with something I cannot understand or feel? Play right. something that I can connect to. And when we go to the schools, I really learned about that, that we're not only playing to the sophisticated listener, we're playing to the person who's had a long day at work, who has mm -hmm. no knowledge of the mechanics of music. We need to connect with that. When a janitor, the guy who's sweeping the floor, I always go up to them and say, what did you think tonight? And if they're responding to what I was doing, that's the win more than going to the sophisticated doctorate teacher who's right. tra highly trained, who understands the 16th note pattern that I inverted and upside down. I mean, th that's sort of cool, I guess, to exchange. <laughs> but 99.9% .9 of the world is not that. Right. Yeah. It's much more interesting to be with and it's not common folk, it's normal people. It's just people of the world. That's who we want to connect. Well, it's because you're speaking to the spirit rather than yes. to the, right. the intellect. And the spirit has right. no intellect. Right. That's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. The spirit is not trained uh, except through experience, right? Mm -hmm. like and those experiences was... aren't technical. Those experiences are emotional. Those are, they're on another level, which is why it's so difficult to express through words your experience with music. Yes, yes. It seems like, uh, like we're shortchanged the ability to verbalize. So don't talk, let's play. And that's another thing, Doug, that I talk to these students. Listen to the way we describe music. We're gonna play music, not work music. Mm -hmm. and that's why we don't use the word practice. I want you to go play for an hour. Not, I need you to go practice for an hour. No, 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 go play for an hour. 
And that's a beautiful phrase that when you play music and we are around music, we're in our sandbox when we were five years old with our trucks mm -hmm. and our dolls and creating stories. That, uh, that mindset fuels Billy Joel, Paul McCartney. It fuels that. Nothing other than that moment of closing your eyes and remembering a magical moment when you were younger and innocent thinking. And then again, Doug, an interesting topic is the people who went through difficult childhoods. Mm -hmm. Like David Bowie is very interesting. His parents were very cold, um, and um, Elton John's parents were very distant emotionally. His father had no relationship to him emotionally. But, and of course, he had a destructive side to him mm -hmm. through his life with drugs and alcohol. But think about the music that he was able to access from that challenge. So it's not that we had a perfectly dreamlike childhood. That almost doesn't set you up really well. It rarely what does, yeah. you, Right? I mean, <laughs> what sets you up well is those moments of saying, hey, man, don't do that. And you get smacked in the head or someone yells at you for walking across the street without looking. All of those experiences create a depth of, of uh, receptiveness. Well, they build your foundation. Those things are very important, you know, so every experience goes into building your foundation brick by brick, chink by chink, you know, little bruise by you, bruise, you know, bruise yeah. by bruise. You know? <laughs> well, so, so true. I mean, in, in what I teach is I, I use uh, the art of storytelling and story writing in mm. basically what we're doing is we're writing our story of our life. And if you picked up a book and it said, chapter one, everything's great. Chapter two, couldn't be better. <laughs> chapter three, everything's fine, just fine. How many, how many of these would you read? Right. But we, so the, the challenges and the obstacles that we have, like you said, Laura, they create that foundation. They're the building blocks. They're the, the challenges. They're the emotions that we p grab upon to then also use to connect to others who have been in that place so that we can lift each other up. And right. the, you know, I do it now through story. I use music in all of our work on a very deep level, but really the work is to, to integrate, similar to you, um, we're just coming at it from two different angles, but the, the power of what you're doing is, I mean, you're, you're doing God's work right now. Well, yes, and you uh, like what you're doing, you. uh, elevating. Yeah. Elevate, yep. man, not repress. Elevate. Bring everybody up because you never know when that kid or that person who's struggling has an epiphany. Mm -hmm. And if you or Laura and I can be at that moment to help the epiphany grow into an aha moment and then grow into a productive, loving life, man, bingo, right? Right. Well, it's all perception, isn't it? It's, it's, all, per it's all perception. Um, down to a basic thing like being nervous or being excited, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at, you know, and, and again, when we're working with kids, it's like if we've assigned, if I've assigned a solo to a particular choir kid and they're like, right before we hit the stage, nine times out of 10, I can't do it. I'm nervous. Oh, right. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm so nervous. <laughs> well, okay. So describe me, describe to me the physical feeling of what you're feeling. Okay. My heart is racing. I can't breathe. I'm sweaty. I'm like uh, breathing really fast. Okay. You can now describe excitement to me. Mm -hmm. My heart is beating. I'm a little sweaty. I'm breathing really fast. It's the same thing. So it's perception. So mm -hmm. it's either I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, which brings you down, or I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, which elevates. And so that is, in my opinion, is the same thing with any life experience that you have. 100%. And, and again, we've all had challenges in our lives. I had a lot of things. I had a rough childhood growing up. I had all sorts of things that I've been through in my life, which I don't need to go into nitty gritty. But to come back to why I keep saying choices is that a, a pivotal point in my life came when somebody hipped me to the idea of you're either a victim or you're a survivor. Mm -hmm. And so we're a victim of COVID-19 and the pandemic, or we're going to survive it. Um, our businesses are going to fail, or we're going to do everything in our human power to, to lift them up and invent, because that's how we live. This is how we, you know, I'm not going to say it's easy. Yeah, Mark 
finds me curled up in a corner sometimes in my room. Oh, you, you know, going being like, human again? Stop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not easy. We so the other day we were like, oh my God, we hate this. We hate that we have to do this. I would much rather just put me on a freaking stage. Yeah. With billions of people. Let me do my thing with kids in a room with me. That's so exhausting, but it's so great. Much rather be doing that. But again, these are these. This is what you do. Are we victims? Or are we survivors? Uh, so my mind, it always comes down to that. Hey, I, you know, we're we're kindred spirits in so many ways. I mean, I, we've yeah. known each other for decades and always loved you. And now more than ever, the the similarity to the the work that we do and the mindset and the love and appreciation for people and just using our gifts to lift up. And you shared that story with the excitement. I just, the other day, I just shared that story about Carly Simon when she uh, was having panic attacks, just shared that story. And it's like, it's really, it's it's that meaning we give it. Yeah. The meaning we give it. Right. And when these things happen, we have a choice and that's all we have. And the work I do, and I use music to do it and you guys are doing it consciously and other than consciously is being aware of what emotional state you're in when you're making those decisions. Right. Curling up in a ball, making a decision is going to be very different than standing (laughs) strong, blaring out a few notes, picking up and getting into state. Very different decision making. And, And that's why if nothing else, add another tool to your quiver of the importance of music is state management so that people can make better decisions about what's going on in the world, what's going on with your grades, what's going on with your family, so that you can take these challenges that we all are going to have and make a positive meaning and use them as powerful building blocks to lift up rather than to weigh us down. Amen, my Amen. friend. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah that was much. good. You've that inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> that was good and so true. <clears throat> so true. Well, it's, you know, there's only so many ways you could draw a square. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're using different tools, but at the end of the day, we're coming from a place of love, from divinity, from acceptance, and from, you know, dare I say, you know, I, I use the word translightenment transformation and enlightenment. You know, you can look it up in the Urban Dictionary. I I own it. I like that. But (laughs) that's what it is. It's the conscious, focused direction of positivity versus the negativity using whatever resources we have. Yeah. Right. Um, And never stop. (laughs) Never stop, man. It's every day we have a new challenge. Every day there's always some knucklehead doing something <laughs> stupid. Yep. And either you want to choke them and scream at them or you go, oh, take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. Let's resolve this quickly. <laughs> so you while know? you were doing that, how many times did you feel like, you know, with all the challenges happening in the music industry and, you know, all the shifts, how many times did you feel like throwing in the towel? Did you ever have that moment where you're like, Maybe real estate would be a good uh, Like, never. did you ever have those moments? Okay, great. Never, because I always think of the consequence. Yep. The consequence of me um, um, uh, compromising my dreams mm. and Laura's dreams. The Beautiful. compromise or the alternative is so much farther, uh, more horrific for me personally. This mm-hmm. is me and Laura that we felt that by working really hard of owning something of value and sharing it with the world is, is so important for us to work that extra distance and never have a backup plan. But as Laura said, the concept and definition of success is constantly evolving. Okay, <clears throat> we're not selling out Madison Square Garden and selling five million records except with the trans Siberian Orchestra with me. But you know, that's a, an anomaly, Doug. You know that that's yeah. a rare thing that you're experiencing that level of success. Most people succeed for about three months in the MTV di- uh, world, yep. uh-huh. you know, that generation. You got three months and then you're gone forever. And I was like, what kind of a life is that, man? <laughs> that's a goal. 
Yeah, so you know what, let's take control, let's manage ourselves, let's have our own record company, let's have our production company. And Doug, my recording studio, which was right here, is no longer a recording studio, it's a film studio. Because mm. guess what, yep. I do five to six videos every day, tutorials, talking about my work, being interviewed, bringing people in that we're hosting interviews with, with other musicians. And uh, it's completely changed. Yep. We're on camera, man. We got to behave ourselves. We got to make sure my nostril hairs are cut and my <laughs> eyebrows are cut and we sort of things. look halfway human and we got to pull it off, you know? Well, what a great gift. The fact that you guys didn't stop. I was just right before we had this call, I was talking to a friend of mine um, where we do like in the personal development field and we're both speakers. I was actually, last time I saw him, we were talking about working together and doing seminars together. And, uh, that all stopped. And he's like, man, I gained like, you know, 19 pounds in this, you know, cause he's like for the first two months or first month, I didn't even change. Like I wore sweatpants. Right. And you know, th these little things that go, Oh, here's a reason that purpose. Why are you playing what yeah. you're playing? Your music is your life. And the purpose behind all of that. And these little things, I got to keep looking reasonably, you know, healthy for being on camera, like forever. Yeah. We're not yeah. in this, uh, you know, as a temporary thing, and there's no such thing as retirement. Right. Retire? That's yeah. that's horrifying to me. I need to make, I need to be in music in my my playpen uh, sandbox. I need to be in that every day, constructing, building bridges and cars and and talk people talking. That runs through my head when I'm writing music. Mm. It's this, this playfulness of unpredictability and uh, really uh, activating a higher power. Everybody's got a different word for that. But where did Beethoven come up with the Ninth Symphony? Where did uh, uh, Paul McCartney come up with uh, Eleanor Reapy? Or Yesterday, oh my God, or Let It Be, or Billy Joel. And these incredible artists, we look at them and go, how did you come up with that? And they say, I have no idea. And how awesome is that? <laughs> yeah. How awesome, a dancer, a choreographer, a Picasso, all these creative thinkers, where does that come from? I have no idea. Well, it comes from the same place that you tap into when you're creating both music and when you're connecting and, and teaching these kids and inspiring them. You know, it's, it's another level. It's, it's God yeah. or, or the universe or Mother Nature, whatever you want to call Again, it. Again, whatever you call it. Yeah. Whatever but, you call but it. It is something, yeah. Doug. You feel it, it every something. day. We yeah. feel it. What is it, Mark? I don't know. I don't want to put a word to it, but I know that when I close my eyes and I'm in that moment, either riding my bike or seeing the sunrise or sitting at my violin playing or writing, holy moly, there's something coming in. I don't know where it's from, but it, there's something coming in. And of course, depression and anxiety and stress stop that from happening. Yeah. So we have to constantly work at, as, cre as very sensitive, fragile people, by the way, Doug, we're, including you, we're yeah. very fragile. We have to be open to that energy to come in. We can't be stiff and uptight. We can't be rigid. We can't have rules. No rules, man. Open your ears and eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, is there an idea? Do I hear a melody? Uh, I hear something. Where is that coming from, Mark? Mm -hmm. I don't freaking know. Let's grab it and make a hit song or make a melody that it reflects how we express ourselves. So that's the mystery is constant in our lives. And Laura and I, that's what gets us up in the morning. Where's the mystery again of that self, um, that spontaneity. Music is so spontaneous, you know, mm -hmm. creating something from zero, from silence, man. That is so cool to me. Even and one of the today. things you shared is so important when you're connecting, when that comes in, is also to suspend judgment. Yes, yes. That's got to go. Yes. <laughs> got to go. Because <laughs> the minute you do that, the minute you do that, it's all about keeping the creative valve open. Yep. The minute you attach judgment, it closes. Mm -hmm. And the more it closes, it eventually gets stuck and it becomes harder and harder to open. So you have to let the negative feelings through. You have to give them their voice also. So it's not all roses and light and beauty. You know, it's like I, I suffer from depression and anxiety. Um, 
for my whole life and I have a handle on it. I channel it through my music. It's, it's, it's my, my venting. It's the way that I vent. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's why also going back to when we work with kids or adults or pretty much anything, we, um, we use our own experiences to make those connections. Um, and it's, and it's really, it's, it's important, but you have to let every feeling come and it's like, you look at it. Okay. I see you now. I don't have any room for you right now. So you're going to go over there because what I want to put in is keeping all of this open. Well, and when we look at those, it, it's like, uh, like a blue note, you don't live in the blue note, but it certainly yeah. adds a nice taste. So it adds that flavor, right? But if it was yeah. all, if it was there all the time, it would be uncomfortable all the time. But the yeah. release of it goes, ah, there we go. Right, right, right. And same is true with life. If we could just be okay, okay, I'm going to have that moment. It's okay. And in that moment, it's going to allow whatever needs to come in that I can then release and share. Right. And, and create something. Right. And create something. Build exactly. something. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is, is to, something. When I say release and share, it's, it's to, yeah. to share the, whatever that is. It could be a creation of music. Right. It could be creation of art. It could be creation of right. poetry. It could be creation of a book, you know, what, whatever it is. Um, or even just a spontaneous smile. That, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that's where and, the judgment, sometimes we get too hard on ourselves that we want it to, we got to change the world when maybe we just need to change the moment. Right, right. That's a good one, Doug. And, and, and finding the muse. I oh, love yeah. muses. <laughs> I seek nice them out. Nice to be married to one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Very true, Doug. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I oh, wow. have the same gift. Yep. Yeah, that is a gift. And I am lucky. Thank you, Laura. Uh, the Thank muse you, is really important because you were cheerleading each other spiritually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Come on, man, you can do better without berating the person, but you can do it. It's just a, it's a really cool life that with the three of us are very, very um, honored and blessed. I, I feel blessed by this time. And, I, and it's so great to see you, my friend. Oh, we dude. need to catch up. It's been too, way too long. I, yeah. you know, I, I got to say, I, I, believe it or not, like one of the, the coolest serendipitous moments was when we bumped into each other in Disney. And yeah. I, I still, to this day, we go all oh. the time because we live close. There's always this little part of me going, come on, let it happen again. They, I mean, they've been here before. The yeah, uh, wait a second. Do you, do, Laura, do you remember that? I do. When was that? Was Elijah with us? I I'm might have sure. been before, I don't know. This is going back maybe like maybe 20 years. Before well, Epcot? Elijah's 20. <laughs> it might have been. No, I, this I, was, I was with my previous before. wife. I don't think I was even working with Tony Robbins yet. Um, right. That's right. right. You, you hang with Tony Robbins, who we love. Yeah. 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 I was, um, yeah, I was on the road with it. So my transition was I, I went through my own disruption and I was like why do I do music and I unpacked what I love about music and I get even more out of doing what I do now because I'm helping people create music of their lives but I get to go on stage I get to meet new people I get to yeah. use music and now I'm starting to bring performance into it but it, it's really it was the same thing it's the the reward to me is deeper because it's more specific in that I yeah. can sort of take a situation like where you guys are helping someone with a maybe learning a new part or a, a new technique, I'm helping them think of a new thought, think of a new way to approach life and, and have a paradigm shift where you take your what you happen with them and extrapolate it to their life. I just go right to the life because I don't have that other tool with me. Fe exactly. Exactly. That's why I want to hear, I want to investigate a whole lot more about what you're doing and we need to continue this outside, I, just we, the three of us hanging. I think know? there's, so I have a, an idea that I've had for years that requires a band and music that's all about creating a personal development event, but live musicians and all of that. And this may be a, uh, uh, an opportunity that could incorporate even everything that you're doing to bring in the kids to do it. Like there could be so much yeah. like work that is, or play that is you know, <laughs> transformational. That would be, you know, again, doing more of God's work. And I, and I don't say that lightly. Um, right, I believe right. what we do is, is mission driven. Um, yes. Yeah. Have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Life is short, man. We got to make it count. 
Yeah. Right. I was, and, I, and you have to give back. We've been very lucky, you mm-hmm. know, as, as we've been very lucky. And, and it's really important at when you reach a certain point in your life, mm-hmm. it's like, well, how do I give back? How do I, from all the things that I've learned, how can I help other people? And so that's exactly what you were doing. And yeah. exactly, it, this is so bravo to you because really this, this is a mission. It's very, yeah. very much a mission. Absolutely. Well, I know we're going to continue this further. I know you guys got to go. Where can we get in touch with you? Drop some uh, information so that we can um, be sure to support you even more. Laura is real good at this. And thank you, Doug. Uh, it's so great to see you. Any t- anything for you, my friend. Of course. And vice versa. Well, we have, of course, tons of Facebook pages and everything. So Mark's uh, Facebook is at Markwood Music. Um, I think on Instagram, you're Markwood Experience. Um, you can find everything on uh, markwoodmusic.com. We'll connect you to everything in Mark's world and also all of our other endeavors. The camp, ah, and again, super excited about that. We have um, so many incredible artist mentors and teaching artists coming, you know, from all o- coming together from all over. We've got David Wallace, the string chair from Berkeley. We've got, um, oh gosh, just all, all of all of these people coming in that that are are you know, contributing to creating something that's never been done before on the level that we're trying to do it this oh, yeah. summer. So Mark Wood Rock Orchestra Camp, MWROC.com. And we have a whole, it's the MW Rock this year. So everything's virtual. Um, we have a whole brand new website for it. We're uh, electrifyyoursymphony.com is where you can find out about our work with, um, with uh, young musicians and singers. The website's in process of being completely redone to add the online element. Uh, our foundation is the Markwood Music Foundation, so you can find it that way. And of course, Wood Violins, which is what Mark started with his own instrument, the Viper. Do you have it handy that you can just hold it up? Oh, Mark? yeah. There you go. Okay, so this Good is Mark. the first one built like a bajillion years ago and started making them for other people when Mark would people would approach Mark at his shows and say, can you make one of those for me? And then now 25, 30 years later, actually, yeah, Wood Violins is 30 years old this year. Wow. Uh, we're building built and shipping. in Huntington, Long Island. Yeah, go. built at a shop in Huntington by real people. Um, and, you know, Wood Violins is, is cooking and we have people playing our instruments all over the world which is really quite, quite incredible. So yeah, that's, you can find us all over. If you can drop those sites in a text for me and I'll put them in. So if you're listening to the podcast or watching the video right now, just go into the description and you can hit all the links. Um, Last uh, quick question. And I, you must know her Lords Lane. Oh Oh, yes. We love Lords. How do you know Lords? I, when I was, when I was a producer and all that, I went to a show, saw her, I'm like, I want to, I, I got to make your records. We never made it happen, but I've stayed in touch with her. What she's doing is incredible. I'm surprised you guys aren't doing some joint ventures with uh, her foundation where she's going into schools and bringing in her work to yes, help kids she's a, with bullying and, and all this stuff. Yes, yes, yes. She, she has one that. of our violins and we are a big fan of hers. Love her. Haven't seen her. Yes. Thank you for reminding. We're going to reach out. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. reach out. She's, uh, she's love her. doing amazing stuff. I think you guys would find some incredible synergy. Um, yes, good. Th- thank you for, sh- for reminding because out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I, and I'm surprised. Yeah, I, I would have been very surprised if you didn't know her because she's yeah, we love her. violin. Um, and then Mike Benigno, Beans, he was on our show a couple weeks ago. He has yes. his school, TrueMusicLessons.com. Um, so again, there may be some crossover. Thank and yeah. also he's drumming in Vegas. So there might be, uh, you know, some, some other cool opportunities. You know? Absolutely. It's all about connecting, Doug. Exactly. Thank you, buddy. You are so Thank awesome. You. I'm really wow. impressed how you allowed us to chatter. Yeah. <laughs> it was music. What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> little symphony right here together That's right little, uh, easy to talk about music oh how could i forget our our probably one of our our happiest guest artists for camp is jordan rudis is going to be joining us from Dream, so dream jordan theater. from ah. dream theater he's doing going to be doing a master class so still working out how it's wow. all going to work but he's he's going to do a master class in our second week which is super cool oh this but is awesome it, it's it's so awesome having just the ability when you when we you first started asking us and let me tell you we have been saying no to 
to people because our, just our time right now is so crazy. You ask, the answer is yes. Oh, it's yeah, an automatic yes. Yep. There's no thought involved. You're the man. And, you know, hey, Mark, Doug reached out to us, and Mark's like, yep, yep, let's find a date. Let's make it work. No oh, question. I, I am so privileged, so, and yeah. um, anything, my my resources, your resources, and let's let's get together offline. You're always welcome to come stay with us, come visit, get out of the, the area there. Florida is nice. Um, I know. And, uh, <laughs> when we get out, I'll reach out to you guys when also when we, we come up every year for the holidays and, and other stuff, so hopefully we can also all break Please. that together. Definitely. That'd be awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I love you guys for who you are and who you aren't. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you so soon. Thank you, Doug. Right. God bless you guys. <laughs> bye bye. You're hot. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging with us. And remember to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast right here. And we look forward to serving you even more. Remember, Download your free guided hypnotic meditation at guidedhypnotic.com. That's guidedhypnotic.com where you'll get your free anxiety-busting meditation. We look forward to serving you, and if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out. All right, we love you for who you are and who you aren't. God bless.